Once your experiment is running, you can monitor it. Here we have a view into the assignment of users to a specific variant, which happens automatically when the SDK detects a new user, and the exposure of users that actually experience that variant. This is a good gut check to make sure your test is running and your traffic is being split as expected. The bar chart is just a different view of the two line graphs above, providing a clear view of what conversion in the experiment looks like for users who were assigned a variant versus those who continued on to experience the variant. The remainder of the charts on this page let you understand variant jumping, if any, anonymous exposures, and exposures without assignments. See the diagnostics guide for further information on these. You can also investigate any of these charts further by opening them in analytics. When you are ready to end your experiment, either because you've run out of your allotted time or because statistical significance has been reached, the page automatically updates to show you the experiment performance data. The information here allows you to track your test results over time, see whether the results are statistically significant, and also segment the results to understand if different user subgroups might have responded differently. The first thing we see is a data quality checklist. This lets you know if there are any issues with the setup, implementation and instrumentation, or statistical integrity of your experiment. If issues arise, click into the guide for further information on how to proceed. Next is a summary, including your hypothesis as defined by the goals we set at the beginning, the performance of each variant, and a takeaway. You may also see some indicators letting you know if your test was significant or not, above or below the control, or above or below the goal. We can already see that our experiment was significant, that the treatment outperformed the control, and was above the target goal. The takeaway says to strongly consider rolling out social experiment. Before I do that, let's look at the data. The analysis section displays the necessary statistical calculations for the primary metric, as well as any secondary metric. If you're new to experimentation, you might find yourself a bit overwhelmed by some of the statistical terminology here. We will dig deeper into the statistics and calculations done here in a later course. But for now, we will go through a high-level overview. We can see five calculations for each metric. Significance, relative performance, absolute performance, absolute value, and confidence interval. I'll start with absolute value first. This is the actual numerical value of the metric for each variant. The absolute performance is the difference in performance between each variant and the control. Relative performance takes the absolute performance and expresses it as a percentage change from the control. Significance is a likelihood that the absolute performance we see is due to implementing the variant and not just because of random chance. Basically, the higher this number is, the more certain amplitude experiment is that the results are not due to chance. The confidence interval is the range of absolute performance we should expect in the future. Basically, Based on the performance of the variant during the experiment, the allocation that was defined for the experiment, and the confidence level defined within the statistical settings, the confidence interval provides an expected range of performance for this metric, should the experiment be conducted again. Below the metric results are some more charts. One displays the confidence interval around the movement of your success metric over the duration of your experiment. The other depicts the daily exposure rates for each variant over the lifetime of your experiment. This is a useful tool for QA to ensure your experiment's variants are being distributed the way you expect them to. Next, there is a graph displaying the absolute performance of each variant as measured by the primary metric, and another graph displaying the daily mean values of your primary metric performance. Now that the results of the experiment have come in, the experiment is essentially over. However, we still need to make a decision and how to move forward. The next lesson will review the options available to you when ending an experiment and what we might do after analyzing the results of this one.